just less than a decade ago anime was something that was heavily looked down on and even though it's still prevalent in more subtle and complex ways it's managed to amass a global audience and gain mainstream acceptance and one of the key factors that played a huge role in pushing anime to the central stage was fashion part series exploring anime's influence over an entire generation of its consumers. This video will unravel about the unique visual identity that anime brings with its aesthetics and its incorporation into mainstream fashion. Anime's fashion and aesthetics are eye-catching and distinctive, extending it beyond just clothing. Characters often wear elaborate and fashionable outfits that reflect their personality, time period or setting, ranging from traditional Japanese attire to futuristic and fantasy-inspired costume, often used using vibrant and distinctive color palettes with bold and contrasting colors, thus creating a visually appealing and dynamic look that draws viewers. And like any art style, it draws heavy inspiration from its locale, that is Japanese fashion and vice versa. Fashion is not just about the aesthetics, it reflects and communicates the wearer's personality, identity and core values. And this is often boldly and fiercely expressed in anime-inspired fashion. So let's explore a few of the fashion styles that are unique to Japan and popular within the anime community. So I'll be exploring this by firstly talking about the aesthetics itself and few of the interesting parts to it and then exploring few of the finer tones and what the wearer wishes to communicate through it. Starting strong with Lolita fashion. Lolita fashion is heavily influenced by Victorian and Rococo styles characterized by elaborate dresses, petticoats and lace. It often includes accessories like bonnet, parasols and doll-like makeup. It has further subcategories like sweet, gothic and classic, each of which is distinct from each other yet has a common parent inspiration taken from Victorian styles. The sweet Lolita incorporates pastels and cute motifs evoking a childlike whimsical appearance. Gothic Lolita seems to be its visual counterpart through the use of dark colors like black, purple and deep reds giving a dark, elegant and sophisticated vibe. And finally, classic Lolita mainly uses jewel tone colors and sophisticated prints thus paying homage to its inspired art movements by creating a timeless aesthetic. The Lolita fashion as the name suggests but portrays shy-like innocence and the luxury that comes with it. But unfortunately for this community, they're often associated with the book Lolita written by Nabokov Vladimir, who basically sexualizes children and says that their precarious innocence is seductive whatever that means. Ironically, the aim of the subculture is quite the contrary because many of the women who choose to partake in the subculture often use this kind of outfits to protect themselves from sexualization because children are supposed to be the least sexual things. Unfortunately, we live in a world where infantile sexualization exists. So people who look at this subculture from outside assume that they're partaking in it rather than avoiding it. Really, kawaii fashion and kogol or schoolgirl fashion get the exact same rep as they do. And it's kind of sad to see. Fashion styles can be used to portray mental health and this is beautifully portrayed by Menhera fashion. Menhera fashion which undoubtedly has a unique concept incorporates elements of mental struggles into its aesthetic. The term Menhera comes from the Japanese words men which means mental health and Hera which means patient. And the fashion often subverts the traditional kawaii elements with more darker somber motives. One of the key features of Menhera fashion is the use of medical accessories and graphic prints that address mental health issues. This includes items like bandages, syringes and blades that are often used decoratively in clothing and accessories. These elements serve as a form of self-expression allowing individuals to acknowledge and address mental struggles in a visually striking way. Manhara fashion is not just about the aesthetics and that's very clear from the description itself. It also communicates about the wearer's mental struggles thus destigmatizing the conversations about mental health. So by incorporating this theme into their fashion, they're able to raise awareness and show solidarity with people who face the same mental struggles. This is a powerful example of how fashion can be used as a form of self-expression and activism. And finally, let's talk about the fashion that inspired my outfit for the video, Harajuku fashion. Originating from the Harajuku district in Tokyo, this style is known for its eclectic, bold and vibrant mix of styles. Some of the subcategories include Decora, a maximal yet cute incorporation, Fairy K, a 1980s pop culture influenced whimsical aesthetic, and Visual K, a non-conformist 
fluid androgynous fashion drawn inspiration from j rock and j pop fashion it's a form of street fashion that expresses individualism and creativity inevitably being the source of inspiration for mainstream artists like nikki minaj and cardi b leading to its seamless incorporation into pop culture i do think harajuku played a major role in carving a place for south asian fashion and by extension their culture this aiding in spotlighting its offshoots like k pop anime k and j fashion and many many more anime's journey into mainstream acceptance has significantly bolstered by its integration into the fashion this reaching a point where their influence cannot be denied celebrities and artists of various genres have embraced anime inspired aesthetics and used that platform to celebrate and normalize this once niche culture one of the most striking examples of anime's influence in mainstream fashion was little nas x's appearance at the met gala a outfit inspired by gilgamesh from fate stray night seamlessly merging high fashion with anime culture and demonstrating anime's aesthetic versatility and its appeal beyond traditional boundaries. Megan Thee Stallion has repeatedly expressed her love for anime by incorporating various anime characters like Todoroki from My Hero Academia, getting JoJo characters done on her nails and even incorporating anime references into her music and public persona. Doja Cat's incorporation of anime-inspired visuals into her music videos, performances and visual storytelling heavily draw from anime subculture and its meme references. And finally, examples that feel like a fever dream is Louis on collaboration with Ava integrating the series futuristic and sleek designs into high fashion and Gucci's collaboration with the anime series Banana Fish resulting in a unique collection that blends luxury brand aesthetics with the anime's distinctive visual style these examples have perfectly portrayed how anime has seamlessly integrated into the mainstream culture the normalization of anime through fashion not only validates the interest of long term viewers but also introduces the culture to a new audience at its core anime integration into mainstream fashion is a testament of the power of storytelling and how art can transcend cultural boundaries it's a reminder that art has the power to shape our perception challenge our beliefs and unite us through our shared experiences so as we delve into this world where anime meets fashion let's celebrate the fact that what was once on the sidelines is now front and center inspiring us all to be a little bit more daring and creative